since YouTube decided to censor me and protect the YouTube community from feminist film theory, um, <laughs> I'm just going to talk about In the Cut. I've since, I've seen the movie already, I think at least three times. Um, and I recently read the book by Susanna Moore. I'm one of those idiots who reads the book after they see the movie. <laughs> Sometimes I've read the book before I see the movie. Um, but uh, I was actually surprised by the book. I didn't know that the movie was such a faithful, like, a, except for a few key details. The movie is extremely faithful uh, as an adaptation of the book. The, what's most important is it captures the vibe of the book completely. Um, any adaptation of in the cut that wasn't almost like you know thigh quiveringly horny <laughs> wouldn't be a good adaptation of in the cut it's so fucking it's dark it's sexy it's horny it's grimy you can smell the urine in the streets of new york city you know, you can feel, you can get a sense of cock. You really get a sense of cock in the book. <laughs> of mainly the detective, the main, uh, God, the Mark Ruffalo character. In the book, he's actually like Irish. Um... In the movie, I think he's Italian and his partner is Spanish in both movie and book. I don't want to spoil anything, but in the book, she dies. <laughs> I was actually surprised. I was like, oh, which I think works. I think it works for the book that she dies and it works for the movie that she doesn't die. Because the movie is, I mean, it gets a little dicey when you really want to end on a downer like it's hard to really end on a downer unless the movie is just or even when you end on a downer uh it's still got to have some kind of upside but in the book there's no upside she's just, she's a dead bitch she's just a dead bitch <laughs> she, you know she's a teacher who had sex with a detective and gets killed by his homicidal maniac partner uh it's kind of funny the setup is really stupid like the setup is we're in new york city we have this english teacher who fucks a new york city police detective that's it that's the whole thing that's the entirety of the book and the movie <laughs> but it works it's so like the atmosphere and the sexuality is so potent, you know, you can, in both the book and the movie, you can smell it, you know, that it's, it works, even though it's a simple setup, you don't need more than that. Um, but yeah, I think Mark Ruffalo did a great job bringing that character to life, like he really embodied that guy, like, <laughs> I think in the book, he's even more of an asshole. I th yeah, he feels like even more of an asshole in the book. Uh, in the movie, he gives him some kind of redeeming softness that I don't think he has in the book. Um, but yeah, the book's a downer. She gets killed by his partner in the movie. She doesn't. She returns back mostly unharmed. Um... I don't want to spoil how she gets killed because it's pretty gruesome. Uh, sexual, gruesome, disturbing. <laughs> so what I love about the book and the movie is that it deals with a very subtle and I think universal aspect of female sexuality, which is the danger of it. And I don't, and male sexuality has that element too, but more so for the woman, sex, sex comes with the very distinct possibility you might not come out of it alive. Like seriously, if you look at the history of women, 
There's very, violence and sex are intertwined. Marriage and sex and violence are all enmeshed in one thing for women. So women have found an interesting way of sexualizing for themselves violent men. And that's what the book is about. That's what both things are about, the book and the movie. Um, it's sort of how this... And Meg Ryan is also perfect in this role. She really captured that character. She's like this little thin-armed, you know, can't do anything to anyone physically, you know, bookish, in her head, neurotic woman who is turned on by the idea of getting killed to the point that she leaps into it to the point that she gets killed. <laughs> She, she's like, oh, he might kill me. I'm really turned on by that. And she follows that instinct to its conclusion. She gets killed. Um, which most women, we pull back. I think a lot of, well, not, there's women who don't pull back because there's a lot of women who end up dead in ditches. But the women who pull back, you know, we understand that instinct. Like, oh, this guy... You know, he might kill me. <laughs> maybe I should back off. Maybe I should leave. Maybe I not. Maybe I don't engage with this guy. But then there are the women who are like, oh, this guy might kill me. Let me take the plunge. <laughs> Let me fucking risk my life for a little bit of dick. You know, it's or a lot of dick, depending. <laughs> if you're lucky, it's a lot of dick <laughs> before you get killed. But, um, you know. It, with For women, very much, our sexuality is very much intertwined with the knowledge that there might be violence somewhere in there. Either within the sex act, before, after, you know, at any point uh, in the relationship, whatever, the whole thing. It's like that Louis C.K. bit he did where he's like, I don't know how women date. How do women keep doing it? How do you keep dating? How do you just get in a car with a man with your little shoulders? You know, with your bare little shoulders. Like, let's go on a date. You know, you don't know where you're going to end up getting in a car with a man. Going into a man's apartment. Whatever. You, know, you never fucking know. Basically. Until you do know. And even when you think you do know, guess what? You might not know. <laughs> Not to, like, say all men are killers. Most men just stop short of that. But enough of them are. <laughs> enough of them are. Or enough of them entertain the idea of it where it's kind of scary. Um, but, yeah, no, it's, it's such a complex, subtle, vibrationally low dingy disturbing book and movie and I love it I mean I think it's one of a kind I don't think there's any other I can't think of any maybe you can put it in the comments if you want like any other piece of you know cinema or literature well I'm sure there's literature but any other film that really deals with it like deals with what in the cut deals with like a noir from a, f a female point of view, like a genuinely from a female perspective, um, you know, dealing with this kind of sex, this kind of eroticism. And I'm sure, I mean, every noir deals with this eroticism, but never from a woman's POV. I really don't think so. Not as much in the head of a woman. This is like fully woman brain cinema. There's nothing else quite like it. It is woman brain cinema. Um, erotic erotic woman brain cinema <laughs> and i you know i wish there's more of this kind of thing but you don't get to see it so much like the closest you get you got to watch a verhoven or a de palma you know but they're still coming from you know the dick dick's point of view uh it's not the same it's not the same thing it doesn't have the same nuance that this has um at the end of the day it always finds a justification for the male doing whatever they want to do um, so to the woman, 
Uh, what else do I have to say about it? But yeah, In the Cut is super underrated. I think it's going to be on Criterion because of the Jennifer Jason Lee thing that they're doing. Uh, she's good in this too. And Kevin Bacon's good. <laughs> they're all good. They're all like perfect for this, strangely enough. Uh, and Jean Campion is just like, she's one of the best. She's the best out there. Uh, I love, I love that freak. I fucking love her. Uh, <laughs> anyone who could make me suddenly think that, you know, Harvey Keitel is a sexual menace. That tiny little Romanian Jew is some kind of, you know, prophet. No, she's great. Um, and what she does with Harvey Keitel and Holy Smoke is even more nuts. But I'm not going to talk about Holy Smoke in this. I might talk about Holy Smoke some other time. But, uh, yeah. My top two campions are Holy Smoke and In the Cut. Those are the top two. And then the piano. Like, those are the top three. She's one of those rare female auteurs where she genuinely has a pretty deep body of work as far as women can have, you know, Catherine Bigelow, Jane Campion, but not a lot of women. If you look at Claire Denis, but not a lot. And Claire Denis is another one. Actually, actually, I'm wrong. I'm completely wrong. I just, I'm pulling receipts on myself. Trouble Every Day, very much in a similar vein to in the cut but it's like more male centric still more male centric than than in the cut um but yeah there's not too many female auteurs who genuinely have a deep body of work like male filmmakers because there's always something you know there's always something impeding a woman from having you know a really big career body of work there's always something whether it's not being able to get the money to make it even though she's like proven herself time and time again to be like an incredible genius it's still hard like even andrea arnold you know she was the um she directed those episodes of big little lies and dennis villeneuve i don't want to say it not dennis villeneuve the other one that was jean marc valet who's dead um he you know, they took it away from her. She directed it and they took it away from her. She didn't have any right to the edit and they just did whatever the hell, chopped it up whatever the hell way they wanted to, which is nuts to me. Why hire Andrea Arnold, who has such a specific, coherent, cinematic vision to direct your TV show, your shitty little TV show, and then not let her finish it? They basically are like, oh, fuck you. You know, you don't make, she has to be there in the editing room. She has to have say over the fucking edit or it doesn't mean anything. Because you can chop anything up any way you want to chop it up. It won't matter who the fuck directed it. A director has to have, you know, final edit, final cut. And they fucking took that shit away from her, which is so fucking disrespectful. She was, she's like at the height of her career, you know? She's at the peak of her artistic powers and you give her this show and then you just fucking take it. That's so disrespectful. And I think like a uh, example of the general attitude, like a woman can be a fucking auteur of her of her day like she is for me she's one of the best out there making movies and that could still happen to her uh so anyway i don't know what the fuck i'm talking about anymore but yeah in the cut if you haven't seen it go fucking see in the cut it took me a second time to really appreciate it the first time maybe i was too young too stupid i just didn't really i was like this is looks weird it's all blurry and i don't get it but then the second time i was like i, I get it happening <laughs> um but yeah some women have no sense of cock at all 